Hey everyone, I'm Austin and this is Sad Boys Anime. Today, we're going to be talking about an anime that I personally was excited for, Glepnir. It showed so much promise in the first few episodes and I was hyped up to watch it weekly, but recently it's been losing its edge and I wanted to make a video about it. Let me know down in the comments if you've been watching this show and how you feel about it. Just a warning, this video is not spoiler free. I will be getting very specific with what I liked, what I didn't like, and how this show disappointed me. With that, let's get started. Here's a quick rundown of the plot for those of you who need a refresher or haven't watched the show. Shuichi is a shy high school boy in a small town. The only unique trait of his is that he has an exceptionally heightened sense of smell. When he finds a girl in the middle of a burning warehouse, he transforms into a mascot costume and saves her. She finds out about his secret identity and uses him to find out more about him and others like him. She suspects that her sister also has powers like Suichi and wants to find her. You find out that these coins that the characters can find scattered around are actually aliens. Yeah, like actually aliens. They're basically just storing themselves like that because they were on their spaceship, traveling somewhere else, but crash landed. One alien guy solicited the help of humans to find the rest of the coins for him. He can grant you magical powers with this vending machine. It's all pretty wild, but that's honestly what got me interested. The fact that this show is so bizarre but is playing it so seriously made me extremely curious about it. The first part of this is going to be what I liked about this show. I just want to say that I was actually loving this show in the beginning. I had it on a list of anime to talk about what I liked about it. I thought the premise was super cool and there were some really intriguing things within the first few episodes. I love the character dynamic of a shy, timid boy and an aggressive, confident girl who are forced to work together. It always leads to interesting character development on both sides. I really wanted to see Shuichi become more ruthless and go all out. But at the same time, I love scenes where Claire was more caring and showed a more vulnerable side to her. I was hoping it would develop on this even further, and it just seems like they're not going to. When the mystery behind Claire's sister, Edena, came up, I was really curious. I was so into them having to search for her and figure out who she is and why she changed into a horrifying monster. It was really cool to see that her power was so overwhelming that Shuichi knew that she had murdered thousands immediately just by the smell. I thought they were going to string us along for a while and have us find out little bits and pieces of her at a time, but they didn't do that and I'm still not really sure why. When you learn that each person's power is reflective of their personality, I immediately was like, oh, okay, so Shuichi is like that because he's too timid to actually do anything and needs the influence of others to have courage. But then you find out he's actually like that because of something Claire's sister did, and then it makes no sense anymore. They just keep making things I'm actually interested in pointless. It should have been really cool to have him realize that this is why he's a mascot costume. I realized that he doesn't need others to be strong. I want to know more about the power fusion that Shuichi did with the girl on his team. How does it work? Can it work with anyone? Can he control it? Does he have to be literally dead for it to work? There are so many questions I have. This is definitely one I can see actually being covered since it's a kind of a big deal and I really hope all my questions are actually answered. The last thing I want to mention for what I really liked were the character designs from the first few episodes. I love the mascot costume, I love Claire, I love Shuichi in his human form. The cross motif that all the powered people have is badass. Everyone talks about giving new anime a 1-3 to three episode try before deciding if you like it or not. My theory is they really wanted to draw you in with the first few episodes, and once people were watching, they stopped caring so much. I initially planned to talk about why I think people aren't liking the show before I stopped liking it. It seemed to be the kind of show that people wouldn't watch under the excuse of it being too edgy or too sexual. I actually tend to like these type of shows. It's interesting because everybody seemed to love Devilman Crybaby. I figured it was the fact that Devilman was widespread with its Netflix release and was a stylistically different show, making it more interesting to watch. It became more and more apparent to me that the show was not as good as I initially thought, and I began understanding why nobody was talking about it. Let's start this section off with how bad the pacing is. Everything either takes way too long to happen or is way too quick. The writers are struggling to get any sort of cohesive flow going on and it's really making this show feel more and more boring. 
we literally don't even meet our real main antagonist until episode 11, and even then we know absolutely nothing about them. I watched up to episode 12 before sitting down to work on this script. I literally had to look up who the main antagonist was because I had no idea. I thought it was Elena and her group, but it's not. I don't understand why they would introduce our main villains so many episodes in without even a tease of them earlier on. It just makes it feel like everything up to this point was a complete waste. As an example, I mentioned earlier how much the idea of Arena becoming a monster entertained me. It was a really big reason for me to keep watching the show. The fact that she literally is in the first place that they thought to look was such a letdown. I was hoping that they'd at least hide for longer, think of a strategy of what to do, but no. He just immediately somehow finds the courage that he never had before to jump in and attack her. And then he gets his head chopped off and there's basically no consequences for it. It just gets repaired, and they don't speak of it again. It was also confusing and pointless. We didn't need to see that she was powerful enough for that. We already knew it based on the murderous energy surrounding her. So what was the point? I thought she cared about Shuichi, but it was just really conflicting information. Later on, when the main characters realize that you need 100 coins in order to have all the power in the universe, a new mystery arises of, does Claire's sister have 100 coins yet or not? She was openly willing to give away coins, so she must not need them that badly, but she hasn't used the ultimate power yet. The longer they stay away from this topic, the more and more I just stop caring about the mystery. I love the fight sequences on this show. They're really well done, but recently it feels like they're avoiding any actual fighting. Sure, it was cool to see them get away from the Gorilla Guys gang and poison them all, but other than that one part, it's been really boring fights. They're over really quickly and it feels like nothing exciting is happening. People get hurt super quickly and then it's over. I really want to see more action because those are the best parts of the show. The show can be genuinely edgy in a really exciting way, but it feels like they're trying really hard to force that now. Everything started to go downhill for me when Shuichi and Claire joined up with their new group. I know they joined out of pure convenience and they happened to be the first ones they found, but why are they still there? None of these characters are interesting. The leader of the group, Sayaka, isn't even that interesting. Her Jason mask is hilarious and doesn't make her look as hot as she thinks it does. I do appreciate that she's lesbian and the fact that they give her actual backstory so she doesn't feel like a token gay character. My issue though is that they still use the I'm in love with my teacher and horrible things happen to me tropes that just feel like gross stereotypes. At least they had issues with their relationship because of its nature, but I don't like that the teacher committed suicide. A lot of media likes to give LGBT characters a tragic backstory, but this isn't always true, and it'd be nice to see some positivity. Anyway though, let's talk about the other characters. I mean, come on, Ikaguchi, the pervy camera head, boring and a dick. Helmet girl, annoying as hell and useless. Invisibility girl? I forget she's there, and I think the writers do too. Plant guy is sweet, but he just doesn't have an interesting character design. I like the scene where Claire made him grow all the poisonous flowers, but other than that, he just isn't a memorable character. I want to know where Sanbei went. When the duo first encountered him in the forest and had to fight him, I was on the edge of my seat. I was really into watching the show at that point, so it was all new and exciting for me. I'm really sad to see that his character just has not returned. Another thing, the cross motif that all the monsters had in the beginning, this was badass and immediately was an indicator that the person has powers, but they just didn't end up using it later on and it's just super inconsistent and it's like they forgot about it. As I mentioned earlier, they just keep taking away any part of the show that I think is good. I haven't read the manga, so I don't know if this is one they are adapting badly or if it's like this there too. I'm really hoping that this show can redeem itself again and improve on all of the things I've really been liking. Let me know down in the comments how you're liking it so far if you've watched this show. Consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I post every Monday and have a ton of content lined up. If you like this video, you might also like my review of Millionaire Detective, so check it out. Peace.